And Paul had some experience. He realized that here at this church, you got to make some preparation for study. A lot of us today are into this mega boom called church. Just sung at Bates Memorial, the powerful preacher Bruce Williams. Mega church. All of that, St. Stephen's in Louisville, Reverend Cosby in Canaan, all that's well, but ah, you're missing something. We got to have the word of God in order to sustain us. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Are you fighting the fight? Are you fighting the fight? And look at your other and the neighbor next to you asked him, how do you know? How do you know? Paul reminded Timothy that all this cash cars, cribs, and all that bling won't sustain you. My Lord. My Lord. To the men this morning, verse number 11 talks about some characteristics that we must have as men. And elder, it is not what it's cracked up to yeah. be. I know some of you sisters and are looking for that boo with the six pack and the fade and all of that. Deep voice. But that ain't it. The characteristics of a good man is gentleness, righteousness, gentleness, godliness, meekness. And some of the ways that us brothers are treating these sisters, and I'm not talking about a particular color, I'm talking about every sister. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about how we approach that thing called woman. I don't care how big you are. Now I'm a big brother, but my sweet potato runs me. <laughs> When I could see, and I'd just been blind about eight years, she could give me the look. <laughs> and my daughters would say, Daddy, you in trouble. <laughs> Never say a mumbling word. But that meekness. And, and Paul is telling Timothy, don't get caught up into foolishness. All right. Now I know at St. John's, y'all ain't got no crazy folks <laughs> that think that granddaddy built the last brick. I own this church. My family is this church. That ain't what Paul's telling Timothy. We have to fight together. We're more powerful this morning when we're together. Locking hands, white, black, blue, green, together. Putting forth the word called Jesus. And if we are teaching anything else, it's not in the right setting or proportion. God is telling us this morning that in our walk with him, we must be sure that we love one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us talk just for a minute what the message is fighting a good fight. 
How are you fighting a good fight? With the climate that we have right now. The only way we can do that is with love. We cannot use the same tactics or the rhetoric that we're hearing and reach anybody. God holds us accountable because he said the poor will always be among us. We can never get so high in our gated communities that we fail to re realize that we can't go down into the, to the city and the projects and, and walk the streets and help somebody along the way. That's what Christianity is really about. Let us examine, first point of this message is how do you line yourself up with God? I'm going to give you some notes here, and I'm not going to be able to expound on them the way I'd like to, but I'm going to give you some notes that will help you line up with God. The first note is, we see Daniel in the 10th chapter, and the, right around the 10th chapter in verses 10 through 14, Israel was in bondage for 70 years. Because they would not do what they needed to do. So at around the 68th year, Daniel realized that he started praying because God was going to free them in the 70th year. Now watch this. He's praying in the 68th year. He knows that they're not going to be set free until the seventh year. Now what I'm trying to illustrate this morning is when you pray and you ask God for something, whether it's health, whether it's financial blessings, whether it is just self-examination, God is not going to just come Boom, it's done. And I think as clergy, we, we do a disservice to tell people or people in the audience that once you come up at the end of the service and give yourself to the Lord, that it's all going to be well and good. But it's not. It's a process. It's a process. Matthew 7 and 7 says you've got to keep on asking. And so, and so, so what, what happens when you're fighting a good fight, Paul is telling Timothy, you got to act as if you already are headed up for eternal life. You got to wear, you got to believe that God is going to deliver no matter what. And so, so Timothy, he's, he's checking this out. He said, now, what, what is this old man talking about? You, you, you mean I got to suffer? Yes. You, 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 you got to suffer, but suffering is a, is, a, is a different type of, of suffering because I know I had some questions to the Lord when I, when I began to, to lose my sight. I, I, I began to ask him, well, why is this happening to me? And, and, and why do I have to go through it? And he reminds me that I, you, I, I have called you. I, I have made a way for you. I will continue to make a way. Some people, they can't take nothing. They, 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 you know, when things happen, oh Lord, I, I won't have a pity party. I had, a, I had a preacher pastor when I first came to the city. He said, uh, Reverend, uh, I feel so sorry for you. I said, don't feel sorry for me. All right. All right. I said, now, if you really feel sorry, put some folding money in my hand. <laughs> and, and let me know that you feel sorry for me. But, but, but sympathy is not what I need. Yeah. Right. Because nothing's wrong with me mentally. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, God has given me 
the, the discernment, if, if I ask, he will deliver. All right. so, so sympathy is not what, what Christian folks should be desiring. All right, they should be desiring to, to move a little closer to the fire. Have you ever been in a situation that everything looks good on the outside, but you're tore up on the inside? I mean, hair is laid to the side. Uh, got your fingernails, you know, you, you walk with a stride. But on the inside, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. And Paul is telling them how, Timothy, how to be. You've got to hold fast to the truth. The truth will set you free. We have a perfect example today how a lie is fairly catching up to what the truth really is. Amen. Bishop Bird told me a long time ago in California when he, he, he said, Amaze. Your, trip, your tricks and gimmicks will soon run out. He said, but you're the type of preacher. You look like you'll preach in season and out of season, whether you're blind, crippled, or crazy. I said, that, yeah, I got to have that. Because, see, I, I dance with the devil. I know how the devil operates. And I had a good time. But I changed partners, yes, and I went to, to Christ, and there's no looking back. You've got to stay with this thing until the Lord shows you which way to go. Now, the first principle you had to, to get in line, you got to line up with, with Christ. Second part of this message, I, I want you to put down in your notes Genesis the 17th chapter and the 18th chapter, we're going to go over and visit Brother Abraham. Now, Abraham, God had spoken to Abraham and told Abraham, he said, now, Abraham, you're going to have a child. And, you know, Sarah, she was in the tent. She kind of overheard this. She said, what? I was having what? So, you know, he, 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 he goes back and he, he tells Sarah, he said, well, I got a message that, that, that I'm going to have a son. I'm going I'm to have a son, and he's going to be what God calls, my, I'm going to have a covenant with him. So Sarah, you know, she said, oh, nah. You know, she's, today, she's in her 70s then. And you know, Sarah was a looker. You know, Sarah 75 could still turn some heads. You know, still, she, but she still said, oh, no, nah, ain't, ain't nothing happening. But see, when you're not in line, when, you, when you're not totally in line with God, God, he's going to take his time to work that thing out. So what Sarah does, she, she calls her, her handmaid, Hagar, and they have a son, Sarah and uh, Abraham have a son, Ishmael, and then he goes up and he takes, this is biblical now, just because I'm blind, don't think I ain't going where I'm going, I'm going somewhere. Uh, you know, Ishmael, it, you, know, you know, Abraham is thinking that this is, this is the one. He, he really thinks this is the one, and then he goes back and he said, he, he tries to present it said, he, he's, the, he's the man. And he said, oh no, that, that ain't it. Spin, God, God said no. And then he, let's spin forward 24 years. Now, Sarah is, is they both up there. So, so, so next time in the, in, in the 18th chapter, he comes to Sarah. He said, now Sarah, you're going to have a child. And uh, Sarah said, now what? She said, now wait a minute. Now, now she goes to the physical part now. I know my stuff ain't working. 
And you know, it's evident that, 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 that Abraham's stuff was, was working. Because he had a son, but you know, Sarah said, oh no, I'm, I'm way past this. You know, and, and she had the audacity, somebody say audacity, to, to, to ask the Lord now, pleasure? And things, you know. And the Lord said, nothing's impossible with you. And so, so, so through it all, this is where Sarah and Abraham get lined up. Yeah, all right, I'm sorry. See, first, first part was a, the, the, we, just, we, we just had an alignment. But now we got a alignment with the two of them together. Don't you know men and women, when they begin to pray and line up, don't you know it ain't nothing impossible? Yeah. I, I, I dare you to ask your pastor that he and his wife get to praying for something. Man, I bet you they set that house on oh, Holy Ghost fire and they just begin to watch how, how the Lord just works it out. Have you ever just really tried prayer? Yeah. Have you ever really prayed for something and God delivered you? Yeah. Have you ever been sick and God healed you? All right. Have you ever just needed to pray for someone else Amen. and see how the Lord will move? Yeah. God will move. But God moves in his own way and in, in his own time. We got to quit being so impatient. I, I, I know sometimes I get frustrated because I can't move like I want to move. But we serve an own time God this morning. A God that will, 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 will never leave you nor forsake you. But through this process, we must be willing to realize that we got to go through the process. In order to fight a good fight, you got to have the right stuff. What is the right stuff? The right stuff begins with prayer in the morning. And, and, and I know all of us can't get down on our knees, but I'm going to get down on my knees as long as the Lord will allow me to get down on them. Now every now and then I might need a, just a little bit of help to get back up and get position. But once you get position, you can just say thank you, Lord. Because there's going to come a time when if you don't keep those body parts moving. I stay in the gym five days a week. Not because I'm trying to look a part, but I'm just trying to keep the things moving the way they ought to move at 65. I realize that sometimes this old body is getting broken, but God is a fixer. And I'm not talking about Cohen, the fixer up in the White House, but I'm talking about a man that can fix it where it can be, under, that nobody can break it. I'm talking about a man that knows just what we need, how we need it. I'm talking about a man named Jesus that is a true fighter. When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, do you know, that man, his name is Jesus. And you know, I thank God for you all this morning because Reverend Jermaine could have called anyone, but he called a little old country preacher named George Mays Jr. that loves the Lord. And I just want to say thank you. Just for me. Just for me. 